No sense of sound. No smell of air. Breathless. I drifted among faceless shapes without a clear distinction of form. Blinded until someone or something made me soar. Higher and higher still, I went. That is all I can remember. I don't believe you. Now sit down. I'm sorry, but you can't leave until you tell me. Where are you from? And what is it that you seek in the colonies? I was raised in the West. I'm visiting the colonies in search of my roots. Do you or do you not swear allegiance to the Lord Protector as a servant of his protectorate? No, I don't consider myself a servant of anybody. But you are. The uniform already betrayed you. The bright blue fabric, the golden stitching. It tells me that you are part of the crew on one of their ships, probably a merchant vessel. The embroidery even says that you are the captain of that ship. Impressive. But what happened to your ship, Captain? I, uh, I can't remember. I've heard that excuse before. It's not going to work with me. First, tell me who you are. I am the Rani, and you can address me as such. Now, is this journal yours? Where did you get that? Who gave that to you? It says Devon Rensburg inside. Is that you? All right. I'm Devon Rensburg. And yes, that is mine. I already know it's yours. I'll give it back to you. Once you've enlightened me on its contents. Now read it for me. And remember... I expect the truth. Again, where are you from? And what is it that you seek in the colonies? Fine. I'll give you the long version. It's not like I have any choice. I come from the West, born here in the colonies but raised in the capital of the Protectorate's homeland, a city that never felt like home. I never connected with its people. I was always the outsider. So I decided to leave that place in search of my roots. 
I had heard about someone in the harbour recruiting men for a merchant ship sailing to the east. It was a standard trading mission along the Indigo route. I had never worked on a ship before, but enlisting in the merchant navy was the only way for me to acquire passage across the sea. So that's what I did. The recruiter, Aaron Ludlow was his name, took me in a rowing boat out of the harbour, and there she was, his lordship's vessel, Herald. My God, Ludlow, have you read this? No, sir, I haven't. Your people seem to be causing a lot of unrest in the colonies lately. My people, sir? Well, you know. I don't know, sir. The indigo farmers, they claim the trade does not benefit them enough. They accuse the Lord Protector of abuse of power and demand fairer wages. The local regent has yet to respond, but I fear he will cave in to the pressure. Is that why we have the politician on board? Yes. Senator Morton is the regent's brother-in-law, and he's going to help him with the complex politics of this affair. He's also accompanying the regent's daughter safely back to the colonies. Remember to treat both of them with respect. Sir. Is there anything else you brought from shore? Well, apart from the new recruit, a letter, sir, addressed to Senator Morton. Well, what are you waiting for? Give it to me. B but, sir, it's not your... My ship, my rules, Ludlow. You know this. Besides, I don't think Mr. Morton has anything to hide from me. <laughs> he better not. May I remind you he is a protectorate official, sir. And so am I. <laughs> you there, what do you think, boy? Should I open the letter or not? Don't open it, sir. It's none of your business and the protectorate won't like it. Really, now? But what if it's important? What if it's something I need to know in order to keep the peace among the crew and passengers? I am the captain, after all, and I have the responsibility to know everything. You should remember that, Mr... Uh... Devon Rensburg, sir. But I prefer people to just call me Devon. Captain Cornelius Hendricks, nice to have you aboard the Herald. Rensburg, I assume you understand that there are rules here. Officer Ludlow will give you the lowdown on them during your tour of the ship. Sir, I have other... But first, Ludlow, I'd like you to find Senator Morton and send him here. I need to talk to him about his letter of his. Be quick about it. I'll send Rensburg off to you in a moment. Yes, sir. Be sure to see me on deck, Devon. So then, Rensburg, I take it you must be returning home to your family? I'm a protectorate citizen. My home is in the capital. But it's time that I see my country of birth and hopefully find out who the people were that gave me up for adoption. I know my father is a protectorian, and my mother is originally from the colonies. It won't be easy to find them. That's why I'm writing everything that might help me with my search down in my journal. Hmm. Yes. Yes, I see. 
Well, you should look at my globe then, Rendsburg. As you see, the colonies are very big. You should write it in your journal. Well, off you go to your tour of the ship. Have a nice evening. There was a globe in the room. The ornate rooster on top stretched his wings out over the world, as if protecting it. The captain's newspaper lay open on his desk. Colony unrest, it said. The rest was too difficult to read from a distance. The paper stand on the captain's desk was filled with letters stamped with a protectorate seal. Cornelius Hendricks seemed to be an important man. The captain's cabin was one of the few places on the ship with a heater. The crew didn't have such luxuries at all. Looking at the display cabinet, I wondered what his collection of exotic and antique weapons said about the captain's character. Oh, well, I would assume he's reading your letter right now, Mr. Morton. I sincerely hope you're joking. No, on the contrary, sir. At sea, the captain makes his own rules. As far as I can tell, our captain is king on the Herald, sir. The crew, his loyal subjects. Officer, there are several reasons why the people got rid of the king back in the day. This is precisely the sort of thing that led us to abolish the monarchy. I'm going to have a word with Captain Hendricks now. Please carry on. The captain's cabin was strictly off limits without an invitation from the captain himself. Not one, but two large ornate compasses stood on the poop deck near the ship's wheel. Protectorate design seems to favor perfect symmetry. I was quite often tempted to take over the wheel and sail us on a random course towards adventure, but that wouldn't have been a smart move.
so many lines and ropes that were going literally everywhere. I still can't comprehend how most sailors I met on the Herald knew the function and name of all of them. The bilge pump on the weather deck was used every day. Even in good weather, some water tends to end up below decks. Looking through the grate, I could see the gun deck below. As strapping as sailors come, even they can't lift most cargo without the use of a dolly winch. There was one particular corner on the main deck where the captain couldn't see you from the poop or front deck. Littered with boxes, barrels and sacks, it provided cover for those in a bit of a lazy mood. All day long you could hear the chickens cackle. Though the meat was reserved for friends of the captain, their eggs were a special treat for the crew at weekends. Taking a short break to get water from the scuttlebutt was usually just an excuse to congregate with fellow sailors. I was wise enough not to stretch this privilege, not wanting the captain getting cranky with me. On the foremast near the deck house hung an ornate bronze bell. As much as I hated it when its sharp sound pierced my ears, I was happy when it told me my watch was over. The lifeboats of the Herald had a capacity of 12 persons per boat. This was just enough to carry all the crew and passengers that were currently on board. The capstan is a rotating device that is used to apply force to ropes, cables and hawsers. But I have heard that some captains tie disobedient sailors to it, with their arms and legs spread across the levers.
The Herald's figurehead had impressed me when I first saw it, but standing on deck, I sometimes forgot that it was even there.